Hey there guys, Dirty H here and welcome back to episode 14 of City Skylines New Zealand. Well I hope you guys are somewhere comfy with your feet kicked up because we have got an awesome episode today. And it occurred to me while I was working on the last episode that we haven't really got an official power station. I'm just using a factory one at the moment so I thought we would do something for power and what better than a hydro dam. A hydro dam makes so much sense because New Zealand have lots of and when I thought of the prospect of building a dam, I'll be honest, my mouth watered. I loved the idea. My brain started going into overdrive, so I just had to do this. So that's right, guys. In this episode, we build a hydro dam, and I go into a lot of detail here, and I've got to admit, I am very, very pleased with how this turns out. But I'd also love to know what you guys think of this in the comments. So first things first, I had to choose the correct part of the map to make this on and I chose to go up the road a bit further from the ski field that we made and I've created a whole new artificial lake here. The road running through here that you can see is also one of two main roads running into the city so I've had to try and incorporate that somehow as well and for the meantime it's running across the shoreline of the lake but now that it's complete looking back at it I may change this because I don't know how realistic it would be to have that next to a lake that I would imagine the levels of the water would fluctuate quite rapidly at times. Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe someone can point me in the right direction in the comments there. There's also a small river that runs out of this lake area and joins up with an existing river that I have in the original map and that's just to drain the lake out and regulate the level of the water. And once I'd created the basic shape here of where I wanted the dam, it took a long time to get all of this how I wanted before I even started building anything. As you guys know, if you do any terraforming with water, it takes ages for the water to settle back down into its pattern and then every change you make after that makes it even longer the wait so it's yeah it can be a process and it probably took me a good four or five hours just to get this terraforming right and man I was so eager to just build this thing it was like oh man it was <laughs> it was a little bit of a pain but we got there in the end the main inspiration for the dam comes from a dam in New Zealand called the Benmore Dam and it's located in the Canterbury region of New Zealand which is perfect because that's not far away from where I've based the map. The Benmore Dam is the largest earth based dam in New Zealand and can produce 540 megawatts of power which is about 720,000 horsepower. <laughs> Imagine that in the Torana cars. So yeah the dam is massive, it produces heaps of power and yeah I thought it'd be great inspiration. The part of the dam that you can see me building right now is actually a stone bridge that I had and I've used PO to manipulate it and use the curved part of it and then just use sections of it to make the dam shape. And this other narrow channel that you can see me working on here is an overflow for the dam and I was a little bit disappointed because initially I was using Ronix's new dam path network which looked great but it was doing funny things to the terrain and the water wasn't flowing through the channel very well so I've had to use PO concrete blocks instead. I also had to use some Terra networks on the base of the channel just to make sure the water was flowing evenly down the channel and that ended up working a treat. absolute number one thing that I wanted to nail for this dam was I wanted the water to come in as close as it could possibly get to the back of the dam because of the physics of the game and the way that it handles terrain the water will seep through any terrain that's really narrow, any terrain walls. So without having a big bulky piece of land at the top of the dam, I was a little bit stuck on where to go here and what to do. I did think about using a key, but then the key has to have land in order to work and that adds even more to the bulk. 
So what I ended up doing was actually creating a waterfall and a trough at the bottom to catch the water and the trough that you see here is draining right to left and that goes into another river and that flows out into the main lake. So it ain't pretty and it took hours and then the main mission from here was just to use the PO dam pieces to cover the waterfall part as closely as I could and then I could use fences and networks to hide the rest of it and it certainly isn't perfect but it's close enough to make for some really fantastic shots. So I'll be the first to admit I really had no idea about hydro dams, how they work or anything like that. I mean, I knew about as much as you guys did. I know the water pressure spun something that made power or whatever. But upon doing this, I've really had to research to find out what was going on. And the first, I guess, intricate building we do is these massive floodgates. There's four of them that control. It must be excess water in the lake. So if it's been raining or snowing and it's melting and running off the hills, the level of the lake changes. These must control the level of the lake and the flow. And you can imagine how strong these gates must be, the pressure that's applied to them. It's fair to say they're not made out of wheat bix And because I couldn't find anything like this on the workshop, I've used various props to make my own here and I'll make just one obviously and then copy it four times and then we can take these over and start building the main structure and I'm using the same bit of concrete here it's a concrete road prop and I'm using it because it's got this really cool slime sort of a look slash texture to the bottom of it which is perfect for a dam obviously then I use city walk city walls super handy concrete wall props and we can turn them into PO and then use them to hide all of the places we don't want to see. Next is to build a bit of a substation here and from what I can gather this is just mainly for maintenance on the gates so I've included some metal walkways with access to the gates for maintenance reasons and there's also a few cars here in the car park from the workers and stuff and there's also a big basement here on the building with a couple of doors for access to drop maybe some goods off and stuff like that. I also put some fences right around this area and include access up and over the top of the dam. And of course we're sticking with that realistic theme that we've had throughout the rest of the city as well.
so you can see there guys what we've got so far and at this point I started to get really excited I was so stoked with how that came out I couldn't wait to start the second part so the second part here is the main power generator of the dam and it starts with these six pipes that feed down and into the main engines all I can say is thank goodness for procedural objects <laughs> because there's no way that I could do any of this without that mod it is just an absolute game changer for you guys that haven't used it this probably looks a little bit scary with all the you know the options that comes up and the colored bars and all the rest of it but seriously it is like a second skin when you use it it is so easy to use and yeah like I say a game changer and while we're on the subject of amazing asset and mod creators I have got Ali creating me an awesome asset at the moment and they are very close to having it complete and I'm so excited about it I'm not going to give anything away but it's coming up in a future episode hopefully close episode I'm not too sure on that I don't want to put pressure on them I'm also testing a small New Zealand airport building by a creator named Revy and I'm sorry mate I can't pronounce your whole name so I'm just gonna call you Revy but the building that Revy has given me to test looks incredible and I haven't got around to it yet but I'm excited to have a look into that so there's some really cool things coming up in future I'm stoked to have quality builders on board I've already had Sven Berlin make me some stuff as well which is super cool I guess they're more asset creators rather than builders but yeah very thankful for these people helping me out So you guys may or may have not noticed that we haven't even named the city yet. I haven't got a name, it's still got the default name of Spring Valley, so it's time we change that up. Or is it? I don't know, what do you guys think? Do we need to change the name? Or if we do, do you guys have any suggestions? Let me know in the comments.
So pretty much the last thing to do here was to run the road right in and up to the hydro dam and this is obviously for employees to get there but also they do tours and stuff like that around the dam and this road is also going to follow the contours of the lake around and in and again I don't know how realistic that is and I may change this but for now it stays like this. I also raise up the terrain here over to the left hand side of the dam just to make it look like the terrain is naturally higher on this one side and then I can finish off the last of the hydro dam area with some more electrical equipment that I've made with PO, a maintenance shed and then I make a bit of a main entrance with some nice gardens that I'd imagine the viewers and people on tours of the dam in the surrounding area would go through this front entrance here and it just looks a little bit more presentable. I have to say guys I think this was my most enjoyable episode yet and I'm really pleased with how it's come out. I'm also pleased that I've made this out of reasonably basic assets and if you've got a good grasp of procedural objects there's no reason why you guys couldn't make something like this in your cities as well. I guess I just really hope to inspire you guys for me that is really the ultimate you know. I was very inspired by the likes of $2.20 and Prez and Strict Toaster and all of those big name boys and I just really hope that I'm doing that to someone on a smaller scale. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this episode. I do sincerely hope that you tune into the next one and that you have yourselves a good weekend. So look after yourselves guys and look after each other. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.